What's behind the global chip shortage? Have you recently tried to purchase a new smartphone? Or were you hoping to get your hands on the latest PlayStation, but none were in stock? Maybe you wanted to buy a new car, but now you have to wait. Well, all these shortages have a common culprit. Chips. Everything, absolutely everything, depends on the chip industry. And now there aren't enough of them getting made, a massive global shortage. Since the pandemic hit last year, demand for semiconductors has skyrocketed and not meeting the demand has hurt many industries that use these chips. But car manufacturers have been hit the hardest. Today's vehicles need chips for nearly everything. Engine control units, transmission control, brakes, steering, infotainment systems, and safety tech. In short, no computer chips, no new cars. Now, many of the dealerships who I spoke with in the area say their new car stock has gone down dramatically over the last few months. In fact, some manufacturers have been hit harder than others. The crunch, which began in late 2020, has forced car makers like Ford, General Motors, Hyundai, and Volkswagen to slow production. Ford, for example, is predicting that the shortage of chips will result in a two and a half billion dollar fall in profits. And tech companies like Apple have reportedly postponed manufacturing some laptops and iPads due to the chip shortage. The question then is, why can't we just make more chips? First, it will cost billions of dollars. It will also take a few years to build and outfit a single factory capable of making semiconductors. The process involves transforming silicon into what's known as transistors, which are billions of tiny switches. And that forms the necessary circuit that's at the heart of all modern day electronics. Craig Barrett, who used to run Intel, said that their microprocessors are the most complicated devices ever made by man. The pandemic forced millions to work from home, which in turn led to a surge in demand for personal electronics. And it's going to take some time to adjust this global imbalance and stabilize supply chains. They're talking about how the chip shortage could slip into 2022. In terms of chip manufacturers trying to, to um, basically raise production capacity, movements from governments also to basically secure also production capacity nationally. But nevertheless, you know, this is something that, that uh, we're in to see for at least uh, three more quarters at least. Some 80% of the world's semiconductors are manufactured in Asia, with Taiwan's TSMC dominating the market for contract chip manufacturing. This has forced both the US and the EU to search for ways to decrease their reliance on Asia. One solution is to expand their domestic semiconductor manufacturing capacity. By 2030, according to an estimate, one fifth of the chips needed worldwide could come from Europe. These chips, these wafers, our batteries, broadband, it's all infrastructure. This is infrastructure. So look, we need to build the infrastructure of today, not repair the one of yesterday. In fact, achieving semiconductor self-sufficiency is becoming so crucial that US companies are even calling on South Korean President Moon Jae-in to pardon Samsung Vice Chairman Lee Jae-young, who's in prison for bribery arguing that his release could help the US boost its own chip production. Samsung is one of the largest chip producers and is planning multi-billion dollar investments in semiconductor facilities in the US. The global chip shortage has been a wake-up call not only for the tech industry, but also for countries looking to protect their technological sovereignty. And as the pandemic and trade wars have proven, nothing in the global supply chain is ever certain. But could this chip deficit lead to something more disruptive beyond consumer products?